Boketov Khabri, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very serious uh, article this morning that we're looking at, uh, courtesy of our uh, friend Latin Passion that made this comment on one of our videos yesterday. I actually saw this on Twitter this morning myself, but I want to thank Latin Passion for bringing this to our attention. Uh, Russian insider is claiming that the U.S. Secret Services have tried to nab 29 Russian troops in Syria and as they say in the title, and got their butts kicked. Russian military is stating this. Uh, kind of give you an idea of what's going on in this article right here. The uh, general here that we see pictured, General uh, uh, Rutskoy, actually went on to say on the record there that the Al-Qaeda members backed by the U.S. Secret Service were trying to nab 29 Russian soldiers. They broke uh, the, the agreement of the, of the non-confliction um, non zone there and we're trying and put their, let me just, jeez, oh I can't. Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. We want to thank Latin Passion for sending us this article in the comments section. U.S. Secret Service tried to nab 29 Russian troops in Syria. Uh, very interesting article indeed. Want to go right to the heart of this article. This is from General Rodskoy, who actually talks about what happened yesterday. And he says, according to the general, an army of moderate decapitators directed by their U.S. Secret Service handlers double-crossing the Russians by violating a ceasefire agreement launched an attack with tanks and artillery on the Syrian government north of Hama in the de-escalation zone in an attempt to halt the Syrian army's successful advance. A key part of the plan was to capture 29 Russian soldiers, which, could, uh, which would have been a major embarrassment for Russia. Here's where the story gets gripping. The 29 Russians were trapped for several hours by the militants engaged in a heavy firefight for their very survival. Finally, the Spetsnaz, a unit partially composed of military natives of the North Caucasus, that's the Chechens, by the way, broke through the terrorist line. Uh, says here, uh, then like lightning over the skies of Syria, Russian Sequoia jets conducted pinpoint strikes against the opposition force which was subsequently bombarded with an artillery uh, salvo providing cover for the Russians rescue squad. Uh, in all they killed 850 terrorists, 11 tanks, 20 trucks, 38 weapons warehouses, pickups, five mortars, all within a 24 hour period. Now the biggest problem that I can see with this friends right now as we have seen even like with that young man Nathan, the Jewish boy that died or had the near-death experience and expressed that there the war between Russia and the United States would actually be over Syria. And why is it over Syria? Well, neither nation is innocent in this case here. Of course, we realize Russia is there to help President Bashar al-Assad, and Assad certainly been falsely accused by the U.S. media as gassing his own people when there is clear enough evidence that shows that there are some former uh, Clintons involved in helping that sarin gas get through Turkey and ISIS hands and bombing and gassing his own people. But we won't go into that today. We've been in it already. But the issue comes down to this. Russia wasn't really willing to help Bashar al-Assad until they signed a gas deal and an oil deal for helping in this conflict here. So Russia also has a stake in this, and Putin has been very honest about that. He's told the U.S., he says, you're not taking our own national interests into consideration when it comes to the issue in the Middle East. So Russia was a little bit more frank about it, and the U.S., of course, they're there for the oil as well. No difference when they couldn't get the entire country, and as uh, former Secretary of State uh, uh, said about this under the Bush administration, John Kerry, you know, they were waiting for ISIS to overthrow the nation. Uh, kind of tells you who they're working with, right? But what happens here, though, now the U.S. is working with the Kurds, the very people they've thrown under the bus, and the Kurds are not a bad people either. They're just wanting their own nation somewhere, although they do occupy most of the eastern part of Turkey, uh, almost from the middle over, so they should get a state in Turkey, if you ask me. But instead, the U.S. wants to make sure they get a state inside of Syria, at least the eastern portion of that, because, well, that way they can have the oil fields and use the Kurds as the excuse. Well, I would applaud the Kurds getting a state regardless, but I would say that fairly, it should be more in uh, western Iraq or that of eastern Turkey, or maybe combined together. Uh, but anyway, moving on along, I want to go into another issue here because some people misunderstand my point when it comes to North Korea. I do agree with you 100%. Kim Jong-un is the most radical leader on the planet of this earth here. But he has been made that way, not no doubt of his own choosing. He was raised that way. 
but uh, there was a lot of help that went along. And of course, this article here, Trump blames Hillary Clinton for North Korean nuclear weapons program. You know, Hillary is not the only one to blame for this North Korean nuclear weapons program. And if anything, my point is, is that we should target the leader of this country. You know, the U.S. has so much intelligence that they can do, so much pinpoint accuracy, and they know the guy. We've already had evidence that they could have taken this man out already. They knew when he was there, while he was doing the test and everything, and they didn't bother to do anything about it. But instead, now President Trump is talking about destroying the entire nation of North Korea. That's what begins to trouble me a little bit, because what I look at is that there's a lot of people there that are no doubt brainwashed or knowing on fear of death, pain of death, that if they don't stand with their leader, they would all be killed in a moment's notice, as often this case is in North Korea. But yet they've got to pay the price because of one rogue, no good, worthless leader. You know, in fact, you ever look at it, the only fat guy in North Korea happens to be Kim Jong-un. Everybody else is skin and bones. So they're definitely not getting much except some crumbs to eat while he gets to eat anything and everything. So why not target the leader? And let's look at this. Trump blames Hillary Clinton for North Korean nuclear program, but the blame goes far beyond that. All right, let's look at this. Clinton approves a plan to give aid to North Korea. This was back in 1994. Washington, October the 8th, President Clinton approved a plan today to arrange more than $4 billion in what? Energy aid to North Korea during the next decade in return for a commitment from the country's hardline communist leader to freeze gradually and dismantle its nuclear weapons development program. Well, by the way, that happened to be negotiated with good old Jimmy Carter. Yep, the peanut farmer down from Georgia that was once our president of the United States says North Koreans boast that it has just detonated its first hydrogen bomb, of course, this is the more modern article, uh, inst uh, instant doubts from the White House and arms experts, their right Pyongyang only has plain old atomic bombs. What a relief. But as one Chinese expert told the Wall Street Journal, the H-bomb claim still shows that the tyrant Kim Jong-un is marching in that direction. For all this, thank Jimmy Carter and Bill Clinton. Uh, North Korea could have done it, couldn't have done it without their gullibility. Back in 1994, President Clinton prepared uh, to confront North Korea over the CIA reports it had built nuclear warheads and subsequently their threats to engulf Japan and South Korea in a sea of fire. Well, of course, President Trump is talking about engulfing them in a fire and fury and total annihilation of the country. Enter self-appointed peacemaker Carter, the ex-pres, uh, scurried off to Pyongyang and negotiated a sellout deal that gave North Korea two new reactors, and $5 billion in aid in return for a promise to, quite, uh, to quit seeking nukes. Yeah, give them more of the ability to do their own plutonium enrichment. That was a great job, Mr. Carter, and of course, Mr. Clinton. Uh, but you know, of course, Hillary's going to get the blame as well. Why not? Blame the wife while you're at it. Anyway, but you know, it's not just them. Nobody ever wants to bring up the Republicans in this. And believe me, I'm not a Democrat either. So I don't really care about either side. You know, Rumsfeld company sold nuclear weapon equipment to North Korea. What was this? A government conspiracy to make sure this crazy rogue nation would get nuclear weapons so that one day the little fat guy could push the button and blow the entire world up? I don't have any idea. Rumsfeld Company sold nuclear weapons equipment to North Korea. This was back in 2003. Uh, of course, he, you know, he became the U.S. Defense Secretary for President Bush. Uh, Secretary Donald Rumsfeld served on the board of the Swiss company that in 2000 sold light water nuclear reactors to the government of North Korea, which critics include Pentagon hardliners say could be used to produce nuclear weapons. What do you know? Donald Rumsfeld does later say, well, the board never knew anything about that. Well, the According to your company, the board was made very much well of it. But of course, you get to become Secretary of Defense, making sure that your enemy is well-equipped and well-armed. That just kind of brings me to this situation right here, the video we did just a couple of days ago, wherein we were sharing with you Mr. Only Fat Guy in the picture, as I said before. And of course, this nice car sitting here in the background with those blue license plates could have only been a Chinese... Uh, uh, <laughs> Chinese member of the Chinese government there that is no doubt backing the government. And as many have said that, well, he couldn't do this without the help of China and Russia. 
you know, this is definitely a new world order. And I don't think China, Russia, North Korea, United States, or anybody else, as far as those in power of the elite, they're all there for the same purpose. And that's to bring about a new world order. And they could care less about us as individuals. Just like right now, somebody is not even thinking about the idea of the North Korean people. These people want to be free as well. And believe me, you, may not, you do you have any idea how many of them, if they could just hear the name of Yeshua, what would it do for them? That's why I kind of take the, the way that I do. I am for more of a diplomacy idea, but it's obvious that diplomacy will not be the way the world will go. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.